Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine on that glorious day laying down my crown at the feet of my Lord Jesus Christ after the trumpet sounds? Amen. Can you imagine that glorious day? You know, in everything that's going on right now in the world, the devil wants nothing more than for us to stay focused on all the chaos. But by the grace of God, by the grace of God, say with me, the grace of God. By the grace of God, we can look unto Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We can just stay focused on the perfect one, on the holy one. And it's in that anointing when we choose to stay focused, to be thankful, to rejoice. That beloved church family, the anointing, say with me, anointing, Holy Spirit anointing on the inside will overflow in ways that you can never imagine. You cannot comprehend the goodness, the mercy, the grace, agape, hallelujah, agape of our Heavenly Father, amen? I am so thankful. I thank God that he chose to, to just tune in at whatever time. We don't limit God to anything. To just be a part of worship in these next few moments, let us just clear our thoughts, clear our minds. Father, we rid of everything that is not of you. We just get rid of it. And Father God, right now, we just come boldly into your presence, Lord, because we have your blood, Father God, that cover, covers us for all of eternity. And it's all because of you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's your salvation, Lord Jesus. It's all because of you. Father, we didn't choose you. You chose us. And Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful for this moment. We are so thankful, Father God. Thank you, Father, for everything that's going on. Thank you, Father, because we trust in you, Father God. We trust that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We trust that we have the name above every name, our Lord Jesus Christ. We trust that we are your holy temple, your holy children, because Holy Spirit dwells on the inside. And Father, we choose to dwell in your goodness, in your mercy. Father, we just want to say thank you. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father, that you saved us, that it's already done, that it is finished, that there's nothing left to be done. It's done. And Father, you're coming back for us soon. And hallelujah. Oh, Father, we rejoice. I'm so thankful. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, have your way. Teach us. Say it with me, church. Teach us, Holy Spirit. It's never the person. It's always you, Father God. So Holy Spirit, teach us in the name above every name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And all God's beloved says, amen. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. Can you imagine that glorious day? When you hear that trumpet, hallelujah, the skies open. And by the grace of God, we're going to have crowns that we lay at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the word Holy Spirit has for us tonight as we worship him. Say it with me, crown, and say this with me, trumpet. Powerful, amen, crown and trumpet. And we're going to get into that here in a moment, praise God. So right off the bat, as we imagine that glorious day, you know what's going to happen soon. Church, before I even move forward, listen, family. There's one enemy in this world. His name is Satan. And what Lord Jesus Christ did already is he has the victory. But yet Satan knows that his days are numbered. And you can see the result of that in this chaotic, fallen world. But please be reminded that your fellow brothers or sisters, we're not the enemy.
You know, this week I've already had a, a number of conversations of just really strong-minded Christians that have their opinion about how, well, if you have faith, how come you don't have church services? If you do this, if you do that. And in the name of Jesus, I have to rebuke the devil right now. Because the word of God says that we have to submit to the governing authority because God has put them in that place. And the word also continues to say that if you challenge that authority, you are showing unto God that you're a disobedient child. And not only that, but what you actually do to yourself, to your anointing, to your relationship with God Almighty, is that now you start heaping judgment on yourself. You actually start condemning yourself when you tell people, well, why don't your church have service? Why don't, I can't believe that you would do that. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with that. We are not the enemy. The devil is the enemy. There is a thief in this world. His name is Satan. And he is the one that's orchestrating all this chaos. But God, say with me, but God. But God has given you the authority and power through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Where we don't act like the rest of the world acts. That we don't hurt one another with what our opinions are and what we think should happen. We just submit and trust in God. Because why? It's in that trust that we know that Lord Jesus Christ paid for us. And that regardless what this world is doing, regardless all the chaos breaking loose, regardless what's happening, it doesn't carry any weight on my faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So we have to stand firm in these moments. When someone has something to say, you just tell them. I submit to God Almighty. I thank God he sent Lord Jesus to save me. My Lord Jesus already died for me. I rose in Christ. I have Holy Spirit living on the inside. And I am sealed by his blood. God has given me authority over everything. And his word says that I will trample over everything. Because you know what? Jesus Christ is Lord. And I have all the authority in heaven in me. And I will not be shaken. So all I can tell you is that if that's your opinion, God loves you. God bless you. But I just choose to stay focused and submit. Say that with me. Submit. The very foundation of our salvation is submitted to Lord Jesus Christ. But yet how we hurt Holy Spirit on the inside is when we are so opinionated and we go against the word of God. And this is why Holy Spirit led us tonight in this worship service, having to do with the crowns that we lay at Lord Jesus' feet after we hear that trumpet sound. Can you get an amen? I'm so excited. I pray that you are. Hallelujah. Listen, the anointing Holy Spirit is in the overflow. Praise God. Hallelujah. I heard a brother say the other day, oh, I hope we have revival. I say, take a breath. Revival isn't something that you go to and feel good and leave and then you're back. No, rebuke that in Jesus' name. Revival is every breath. You know why? Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The victory is already won. Death is defeated. Hallelujah. Death doesn't have a sting. But yet when death faces us, why do we tremble in fear? This is where God wants us right now. Say with me, cast all my crowns at Jesus' feet. Amen. Rejoice. Hallelujah, rejoice. And again I say, rejoice. Oh my goodness. This is the first, number one thing. The Apostle Paul said it time and time and time and time again. Rejoice, rejoice. Don't be anxious, don't worry. Rejoice, rejoice. And you're talking about followers, disciples, apostles, whatever label you want to put on them, children of God, like you and me, that when they face adversary, when they're facing trials, when they're facing death, they did not waver. They stood firm in their identity. I am a child of God. You cut my head off. I am a child of God. It doesn't matter. And God is asking of us right now, Come on, beloved child of God. God is saying, will you get rid of all the distractions? Will you get rid, will you rebuke the enemy? If the TV's talking too much all day long about this going on, this person dying, all this, turn it off. Hallelujah. Shut it down. I just said not too long ago, I'm thankful for the blood.
block, the block button on my cell phone and the delete. Amen? And God is asking us, will we do that? The glory of God is He loves us. See, no matter what happens in this world, no matter what, for eternity, that is never going to change. God loves you. And see, this is where God wants us because when you know that the Father loves you this much, agape, come on, our family, agape, we won't say things to hurt other people. We won't say things to cause a brother or sister to stumble. We won't be judgmental over anything. We won't. Don't judge, don't, don't criticize nothing. Some people tell me, what are you telling me, Joey? I'm not allowed to have my opinion. I'm not allowed. You're allowed to do what he says to do. Can I get an amen? You're allowed to do what God tells you to do. If God didn't say do it, don't do it. Don't go away. And don't get crunchy over it. I'm just being honest. So can you imagine that day when that trumpet goes off? Can you see the skies opening up? Can you see the ones that's dead in Christ raise up? Hallelujah. I don't want to jump ahead of what Holy Spirit has for us. And the question is, will you be laying down crowns of glory at the feet of Lord Jesus? Were you aware? Were you aware? Did you even know that there's crowns? Right? Now listen, I know nothing. All I know is that Jesus Christ owns me. He's my God. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. I know nothing. I choose to know nothing. I'm a foolish man. I'm not worthy to stand here before you. But because I worship Lord Jesus and I said, yes, I'll be accountable, Father. Yes, I will be accountable standing before you on that glorious day. That I will speak what you tell me to speak, Holy Spirit. And it's in your anointing, Father God, that you will go before me. Every one of us has the gifts of God. Every gift imaginable, Lord Jesus Christ paid, paid it in full for you. Will you receive that tonight? Amen. Will we get all the criticalness out of our thoughts? Do that with me. Touch your head. Say it with me. Father God, rebuke my pride. Rebuke my self-righteousness, Father God. Rebuke myself, Father. Rebuke it. All I want to do, Father, is trust in your perfect son, in your perfect sacrifice. Father, I remember that glorious day when I called on your name, Lord Jesus Christ. You saved me. It didn't matter what scriptures I knew. It didn't matter what, what I was doing. It, it had, there was nothing. It, all that matters is your love, your agape. And I received your agape through Christ my Lord. So Holy Spirit, rebuke my thoughts. Change me, O oh Lord. Say it with me, church. Change me, O oh Lord. I bless your presence because it's only in your presence, Holy Spirit, that we know that we are shielded and guarded. All we want is you, Lord. And it's in Jesus Christ's name. All God's beloved said, amen. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. Say it with me. Rejoice. And again, I say, rejoice. Praise the Lord. Getting better, gooder and gooder with that. Amen. Rejoice. All right. Praise God. Number one, rejoice. I am recovered by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved of God. Amen. Rejoice that you are his for eternity. Rejoice. You see what the world wants to do is for you not to rejoice, to get worried, to get frustrated. Rejoice. This is the number one thing that you can do in your anointing. Because as soon as you start choosing to rejoice in what Lord Jesus Christ done did for you, that's a God means. What Lord Jesus Christ done did for you, you rejoice. You see what you're facing? God already knew. Hallelujah. God already knew. And the glory of God is when you rejoice and you worship, God says, I took care of it. But when you worry, that is when the 
the enemy is hoping. Come on, go left. Go left. Worry is that way, right? God says, stay focused on me. Look at me. Look at me, my baby. Look at me. Right? Come on, daddy. Daddy. But what the enemy is hoping is that you do one of these. Right? And I pray that it was just that moment and just look back. Hallelujah. But there's some of us, even right now as you're listening, Holy Spirit wants to bless you and say, stop. Because there's some of you that look, and guess what? Because of worry, because of anxiety, because of panic and chaos, we're not in the picture of what God wanted. Right? We call that picture His will. Amen? I pray in Jesus' name that we just stop and we just allow God to just flow through us in Jesus' name. Amen? So say it with me. Rejoice. I am recovered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness, it's going to be a miracle to get through this. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name that the rapture takes place as we are worshiping right now. Oh, glory to God. That we can't even get through this. That the next person that finds this, they're just going to see this tripod standing here. And maybe the phone will be dead. I don't know. Right? I just... Listen, family. That's where my mindset has to be. That's where my mindset has to be. I'm just saying, that's where Brother Joey has to be. Constantly. You know why? Rejoice! <laughs> I choose to be happy. I choose to be thankful. I choose, say with me, I choose to rejoice. Amen? These are the books that we're going to go through. And by the grace of God, you know I wasn't kidding when I said pray for me. Hallelujah. We're going to go through the crowns that we're going to be laying at Lord Jesus' feet. And don't worry, because God is going to encourage and bless you and light a fire in me like never before. I'm asking God, light a fresh fire in me. Hallelujah. I never want to approach you, Father God, as familiar. I always want to worship you as today is the first day, and it will be my last. Hallelujah. We aren't promised the next breath. We aren't promised tomorrow. But glory to God, how awesome is it that we can choose to live, say, Father, I'm going to give you my all. See, when we act this way towards God and we live a life rejoicing of what Lord Jesus Christ already done did, the anointing, say with me, anointing, Holy Spirit's anointing within us will overflow in such a way, this is where the Bible says, when you love and seek God first and his kingdom, his kingdom within you will overflow. And in that overflow, you will love one another. It's default. It's default. You know why? It's a God day all over you. Amen. And there's no gooder and gooder than that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, after these five books, we're going to get into three more books. And we're going we're gonna to close with that trumpet call. Amen. So number one is rejoice. The crown of rejoicing in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 19 says this. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory? In the presence of our Lord Jesus. When he comes. Now listen to this question now. Here is the Apostle Paul writing. And, and just writing as far as just encouraging and allowing Holy Spirit's anointing to, to minister to the church of Thessalonica. And that, here, read this. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes? He's asking them, what do you think? What do you think about the glory? And then look at this answer. Is it not you? <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it beautiful that God created all this? Hallelujah. From the time he spoke, let there be light. From Adam and Eve all the way to the end, for he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He did it all for you. Right 
there that just, right? And God wants us right now to take a hold of that. To take a hold of that agape. To, to take a hold of that intimacy with God. See, religion teaches that, yes, God is God, but yes, look at all this, look at all this. No. No. God says, look at me. It's just you and me. And don't you love it that here's the Apostle Paul speaking this way because Holy Spirit says, I want my church, I want my children to know I am no longer in the law. I am no longer behind the curtain. I am no longer in idle dead works. I am now in you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit flow. Amen. So here he, here he says, he says, is it not you? And then check this out. Indeed. Oh, hallelujah. You are our glory. Our glory. Say that with me. Our glory. You are our glory and joy. Isn't it beautiful? That when you think about this, Holy Spirit right now just took me to Christmas morning. Right? When you're just so excited because you know, okay, I went to sleep. Now, praise God, I'm awake. I know we didn't talk like that when we were little. We just got up and said, oh, presents. <laughs> yes. Right? And we would run down the stairs or, you know, if you didn't have those stairs, you'd run wherever. And you would get there and you just see your gifts. Amen? You see your presence. Some of you already knew your presence because you done saw it in the closet. Come on now, God knows. But anyways, you see it, you're just like, whoa, hallelujah, right? And you see it, you're just so happy. This is how God feels about you right now. As we worship God Almighty, he is so in love with you that he is overwhelmed with joy. And this is why our Lord says rejoice, for you are. Say it with me, I am. I am a gift to God. He paid for you. Hallelujah. He paid for you. So again, I say rejoice. This is the first crown of rejoicing. Say with me, I am recovered. I am recovered by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why I rejoice. Amen. Number two, rapture. Hallelujah. My God is coming soon. How many of you believe that? Praise God. Raise your hand. Hallelujah. My God is coming soon. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. My God is coming soon. Amen. In 1 Peter 5, 4, this is the crown of glory. Say that with me. Glory. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. The crown of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three, God's view and opinion of me. We just said it, glory. Say it with me, glory. This is the crown of righteousness that is spoken of in 2 Timothy 4, verse 8. 2 Timothy 4, verse 8 says, Now there is in store for me, say it with me, for me, for you. Right now, there is a crown. Hallelujah. I want all the crowns in my worship life. Amen? I know you do too. I want all the crowns that Lord Jesus done paid for. Praise God. When we're raptured out of here, I want beep, 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 beep. I want the biggest truck in heaven and you're going to unload all these crowns. I don't say this privately, but I pray that I can bless God in this hallelujah rejoicing. Hallelujah being happy. Hallelujah being his child. Being the child and just saying, God, you love me. You're my daddy. You're my father. And I'll do anything for you. Right? I mean, anything. I will love, I will, I, I will encourage, I will bless, I'll go where you say go. I will rebuke when you tell me rebuke. I want your light to shine and go before me. Amen. Ooh, puberty just hit my voice just cracked. But I can you imagine that truck backing up and then unloading all the crowns? Huh? I pray that you want to bless Lord Jesus. Because he's worthy. To leave perfection. To leave heaven. Can you imagine that he had to look at the father go, it's time. I love you, I'll be back. 
He didn't have to. And I pray. I pray that before we get over this worship service, Holy Spirit lights a fresh anointing, a fresh fire as we worship God, as we all pray for one another. Watch all these things happening in the world just stop. Can I get an amen? It's only in worship. It's only in His presence. Hallelujah. But I'm just so thankful for the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful. Can you imagine just in His name alone? Say it with me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Right there. Right there. You could feel the anointing Holy Spirit not only in your heart. Some of you may not even be feeling good. Some of you may be going through things. You could feel God's presence take such a hold of you. Just let it go. Hallelujah. We let go, Father. Amen. Now there is in store for me, for us, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, he's the only judge now. He's the righteous one. You know, I hear far too often, well, oh, Brother Joe, you just don't know what I did. I don't care. You don't know what I did. All we have to crucify is that old thought, the old self. All we have to do is just lay it down. And God says, don't pick it up. I got this. And the glory of God is, Lord Jesus says, he and she is mine. That's my child. That's my son. That's my daughter. Father, I give them my identity. And glory to God, you can just live a life free. Free. Say it with me. Free. To be victorious in every situation and circumstance. Regardless what the news say, what social media says. Regardless how people act. And yet, amen. Lord Jesus Christ is the righteous judge. And he will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. You know, here at Open Arms Community Church, our church family, we love to say, see you in the next half an hour. See you in the next five minutes. You know, when you say goodbye to someone, I'll see you in the next five minutes. And the beauty is, I hear a lot of people, a lot of people, especially when they overhear that, what are you guys talking about? And immediately, I just, it's an opening for Holy Spirit to just show his light, agape, right? To just tell somebody, God's coming back soon. God's coming back to get me soon. You know, I love it when you just make it so intimate and personal and you're just rejoicing, you're excited, and you tell people and they look at you like, okay, all right, yeah. But guess what? God promises that when you speak that word, that word doesn't come back void. And Holy Spirit has anointed us in the, in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ to speak that word boldly. And Lord Jesus Christ, he's coming. Amen? Say with me, glory. We know that the glory of God is his view and opinion of who you are. That's deep now, family. The Lord Jesus Christ is God's only son, perfect and righteous. Amen? We just covered that. Say it with me, identity. Number four, identity. The crown of victory in Revelations 2, verse 10 says, Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Victor's crown. This victor's crown is your identity. See, many of us who have received Lord Jesus Christ and have the anointing of Holy Spirit, you have already experienced death in Christ. You've already died. Well, Brother Joy explained to me because I'm still living, I'm still alive, I'm a Christian, I'm born again. You already died. You're living. Even if you physically die, you're alive for all of eternity. This is the death that God wants to expose right now. But yet, why is it that when we know that this isn't home, this isn't where we belong, it's not just the song, right? But why is it then that when something is confronting us that carries a quote-unquote threat, why does it carry weight when we know that this isn't 
where we belong. You see, these are those moments that God is blessing us with a fresh anointing, a fresh fire. Remember that eternal passion, not temporary passion. You see, this is how, this is how the enemy, the devil, Satan, coronavirus, this devil, right, wants to wreak havoc. On all the ones that say that, yeah, 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 I'm a Christian. Yeah, 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 I know that I'm saved. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Oh, yeah. But yes, when something like this happens, how do you act? See, this is what the Bible calls fruit. By their fruit, you will know them. And what I'm asking in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ is that we repent. We ask God to forgive us. See, some of us want to say, oh, okay, I was wrong. I was wrong. I don't want to be that way no more. This is only between you and God. If that's your repentance, then you've repented. But if you know that I didn't really repent, I honestly just got crunchy because Holy Spirit convicted me. I got crunchy about it and I just said, okay, whatever. That's not repentance. Repentance is, okay, Father, this thought that came into my head is not of you, it's from the devil. And what this thought consisted of is that when I heard that this thing was trying to creep up and all this chaos was taking place, I took my eyes off of you, Lord Jesus, and I started looking at all these other things. So, Father, right there, I know that I was wrong, and I ask you, Father, to forgive me, even though I know I'm forgiven, because, Lord Jesus Christ, you forgave me. It's already done. But your requirement, Holy Spirit, in being accountable, because I am your child, this is my holy of holies. Holy Spirit, say his name, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I bless you, and I'm saying I am sorry, and I am allowing you, God, to change me. Because I know you're a God of mercy. I know you're a good and perfect father. And you won't push yourself or make me do anything. But I'm coming to you, Father, because I took my eyes. I listened to things. I, 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 I got consumed with something that's not of you. Oh, Lord Jesus, forgive me. And it's in these moments when we approach God's throne boldly because we know, Daddy, help me. Just like the prodigal son, straight from the pig's pen, smelling like poo poo, right? Just nasty. Did the father go, well, hold on, go take a shower first? No. That's why Lord Jesus told that story. But we have to realize, I'm in the pig pen. My thoughts right now are in the pig pen. My worry right now is in the pig pen. My gossip. My backbiting, my opinions, my pride, it's in the pig pen. And all God needs you to do is when you realize I'm in the pig pen, all God is asking, just like the prodigal son says, I'm going to return to, say with me, my father. See, you are a child of God. And God wants nothing more than to bless you and equip you, amen, and to go before you and allow his light, Holy Spirit light, to shine before you. You know why? The world is coming to a point where you think this is bad, but when we're raptured out of here, you, you're going to experience and see what I'm talking about. Holy Spirit's at the point right now where he's saying, make my church aware that this little thing is taking place, but rather than calling on my name, the focus is this distraction. God is saying, no more. Say it with me, no more. No more in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God has equipped you with every good and perfect thing from heaven, paid for in full through our Lord Jesus Christ. That Holy Spirit is saying, my child, call upon me and watch what I will do. Amen. Say it with me. This is my beloved identity. Amen. Number five. Holy Spirit resurrected me from the grave, and I am victorious. Say it with me. Agape. Hallelujah. Agape. This is the perfect love of the Father. In the perfect Savior, the perfect beloved Son, the one and only perfect one, the way, the truth, and the life. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Agape, nailed to the cross. Amen. It was the action of the Father to crucify His Son in payment of our sins. 
And what was the reaction of that perfect sacrifice? The perfect resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ through the power and the anointing, say it with me, of Holy Spirit. And this, hallelujah, is agape. Amen? The imperishable crown. I love it when the Word of God starts off like this. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24 and 25. Do you not know? Hmm. Whew, I tell you right now, those, those, those are those moments, therefore, it's there for a reason. Do you not know? I'll tell you right now. Those are especially the moments in the Word of God, in the written Word of God, that I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, whatever I think that I know, or if I'm blocking you in pride, Father, forgive me. I am so sorry. I need to know this. Hallelujah. Say with me, I need to know this. Amen. Because when the written word of God is telling me, do you not know? Right? Do you not know? I remember one time when I was real little. That I don't know if there's still stoves like this, but uh, the stove that has the wire that gets real red and hot. You know what I'm talking about? Our stove at home, some of you are looking at me like, what in the world? My mind has a flat surface. There ain't no ring. But when it gets real red and hot, right? And I remember when I was little, I knew, right? I knew that that was hot. I know it's hot. My goodness. But guess what I did? Of course, many of you know that know me. Huh? I was little. That's why I had to reach up for those of you. <laughs> right? Just immediately. My goodness. Like 0.3 seconds. You know? You're going to burn yourself so bad. It's like you don't feel it right away, but you know that this is bad. Right? And it was one of those moments. I had really bad burns that day. I remember my mom, my mom saying, do you not know that that's hot? Right? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just wanted to share that with you. Pray. Do you not know? Right? That in a race, all runners run, but only one gets the prize. Only one. Praise God. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He was the one. That's why it's the joy of his salvation that we rejoice. Amen. Because he learned in it, and he gave it to us, hallelujah, and that's why we are his body, his church, amen. That's why we are his holy people, his holy church, his holy temple, right here, bam, right here, right? Praise God. God lives in us, amen. And all he wants us to do is to worship and to plead his holy blood in the times of distress, praise God. Do you not know? That in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. Here, here's what God says. Run in such a way as to get the prize. God is speaking, hallelujah, that imitate the life of Lord Jesus Christ. Imitate his way, the truth, his life. Amen. Imitate him. Praise God. How do we imitate him? It's in that crucifix crucifixion of the flesh. And the resurrection of the Holy Spirit within us, the Holy Spirit will guide us and teach us with all wisdom from heaven to live a holy life. Amen? Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Amen? This crown that lasts forever is his agape love. Amen? Faith, hope, love, above everything is his agape. Hallelujah. Say it with me, agape. Praise God. So let's, let's do a quick review. We're about to close. Praise God. Oh, I'm just so excited. It's gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen? I'll tell you right now, I can barely hold on, and I, I am so thankful. I am so thankful that my Lord Jesus Christ, he's getting ready. Amen? Glory to God. I am recovered by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Say it with me. Rejoice. Amen. Hallelujah. My God is coming soon. Rejoice because the rapture is going to take place. Rejoice knowing that we are not left alone. This is not our home. And our home is in eternity in heaven. Oh my goodness. When you know this, you know that we will be raptured soon. God's view and opinion of me is his glory. Is God's glory shining through you? Do you know what God's thoughts of you are? Do you know how much he loves you? Hallelujah. See, when you worship him and you plead the blood of Lord Jesus, and you thank God for Lord Jesus, 
Say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit in you. Holy Spirit in you will tell you how much he loves you. Because he will not say anything that the Father doesn't say. He says, he speaks and does everything from what the Father says. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ is God's only Son, perfect and righteous. This is our identity. Amen. Remember, when you know that your Lord Jesus, my Lord Jesus, is perfect, he comes straight from heaven. Hallelujah. Born of a Virgin Mary. Amen. Live a perfect life. Blameless, perfect, fulfilled every requirement that we put on ourselves. It just kept getting worse and worse. God says, I'm going to take care of it. Hallelujah. Tortured, beaten, spat on, hair ripped off his face. A beating that no one could just watch. God himself did that for you and me. Gasping for air as he was stretched out on that cross. It's incredible that in all this chaos in this world, just getting the sniffles or sore throat, people are running around. Why don't you take that focus off of yourself and apply it to what Lord Jesus went through on that cross? And I believe and declare in the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing Holy Spirit in you, that healing will come upon your body from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. There's some right now that are struggling. In Jesus' name, watch what God will do as he touches your body and heals you and breaks everything. Now remember, when, not if, when this healing takes place, we have to repent. We can't think of the old anymore. You're saved. You're healed. You're restored. You are not broken, sick, tired. You overcome. Why? He overcame. Amen? And this is our God-purchased identity. Hallelujah. He is the righteous one. It's not our righteousness, it's his righteousness. Amen? Number five, Holy Spirit resurrected me from the grave, and I am victorious. Say with me, agape. Amen? I am God's beloved child for all of eternity. Say with me, I am beloved. And when you know that you are the beloved of God, as you live your life day in, day out, moment to moment, just being thankful for what Lord Jesus did on that cross. Now remember, when we talk about agape, it's the love of the Father that he would send his only son. It's the love of the son, his name, and it's the only name above every name. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. And it's the name of Holy Spirit, the one that resurrected the perfect one. That is our God, three in one. Amen. And it's because you know that you are a beloved child of God and what God did for you to live on the inside of you. Say it with me. Rejoice. Amen. Now we just got a few more minutes. I know that I, I started and I, and I told you that this is laying down my crown at the feet of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We discussed rejoice, rapture, glory, identity, and agape. Beloved church family, I speak this to everybody who has ears to hear, whoever comes across this video in the future. God is asking for us to surrender, to submit, to lay down our crown. Now when you study anatomy, that's everything. Now say with me, everything. The, the crown is a part of the body resembling or like to a crown. It's actually this part right here where my bun is. Where my bun is right here. And I love these pictures right here that I'm about to show you. Because it shows just the pure intimacy and worship in laying down our crown at the feet of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In Revelation 4, verse 10, it says this. The 24 elders fall down before the one seated on the throne. And they worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crown before the throne, saying, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. 
By your will they exist and came to be. Again, amen. And I just love this picture and I pray that God just deposited a seed in us to submit to lay down every crown. I pray in Jesus' name that when we move forward from this evening of this worship service, that we move forward with a purpose to glorify Lord Jesus Christ and to allow His Holy Spirit to shine and extinguish the darts of the enemy. Hallelujah. The second part of this is after the trumpet sounds, and these are these three books that I'm going to go quickly over. So 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 says this, For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive, say it with me, that's me. Hallelujah, that's us. Hallelujah. And our left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the sky. And so we will be with the Lord, say it with me, forever. Amen. Matthew 24, 31 says this. And he will send his angels with a loud, say it with me, trumpet call. And this trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end to the heavens to the other. I just want you to know that when we talk about the trumpet call, I, just like everybody else, you're a child of God, you have Jesus Christ as Lord, hallelujah, Holy Spirit, and you can't help but to get excited. You know why? All of heaven is getting ready, amen? All of heaven knows it's about to go down, right? It's about to take place, Amen. And when you talk about this trumpet, it's so exciting, amen? I ask God for this word, and I tell you right now, it's just incredible as far as the anointing of Holy Spirit. You know, when you just worship and you're just thankful for Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit takes a hold of you, and I tell you right now, it just gets gooder and gooder. Amen? just gets gooder and gooder. So we went to the study of anatomy and how crown, say crown with me, crown, Right here, you can see it. Praise God, you're blessed with a brother that can just show you with his bun. Amen. And then when you study botany, check this out. It shows a daffodil. Now when I say daffodil, I have to back up and, and, and just explain this real quick because a few, day, a few days ago I asked Trish, is it spring? Because I don't know about you, I, I can't tell what the weather's like anymore. I, there ain't no telling. And Trish says, no, it's not yet spring, honey, but in a few days it will be. So I asked Holy Spirit for a word for this new season approaching us, amen? Despite all this chaos and all this garbage, right? I said, Father, it's a new season and it always just gets gooder and gooder because we choose to bless you, Lord Jesus Christ, amen? And so having said that, God said, on the first sign of spring, I want you to talk about this. And I said, okay, Lord. He says, the daffodil. And this is so interesting about this daffodil and everything ties in together. Once again, Holy Spirit's the teacher. Amen. We don't go to any man or through any man. We only go to Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so check this out. One of the first signs of spring, you see the daffodil. And the daffodil serves as a sign of hope. Let me explain. It's especially useful for an individual who is transitioning from crisis or a darker period those times into the light. I think this is very significant and it applies as far as right now into the climate the world is in. Can I get an amen, right? With all the chaos and the distractions of the evil one, with all this garbage taking place, I'll tell you right now, the only virus is, is that we're not, you know, we're not leading people to Lord Jesus or being the shining light or, 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 or laying down our crowns at the feet of Lord Jesus. Or even paying attention that the trumpet is going to be blown. That's the real virus right there. That's the real virus in everything that's going on. Amen. We have to call it what it is. Hallelujah. And what it is, is this is the devil. There is evil. This is a fallen world. And praise God he gave us Lord Jesus so that we don't have to suffer. Amen. And hallelujah, when we have this anointing and we have this blessed assurance that we know. We know without a shadow of doubt. That God is for us. He loves us. It's all because of this one perfect man. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I love this because when you're transitioning from winter to spring. You know, you, you just see not only the weather change. Of course, we just 
We just sprung forward not too long ago, right? And by the grace of God, we made it to church on time and everything else. Hallelujah. But then I love it because it is a sign of hope when you see a daffodil come up. For those of you who haven't seen a daffodil, I know it's a little picture. Praise God, I'll put up pictures later on our Facebook page. But praise God, there's a daffodil. But what's interesting about daffodil, and remember this is the study of the Bible, is this. The cup shape, or say it with me, trumpet shape, outgrowth at the center of a daffodil flower. Trumpet. Hallelujah. So think about this. We talked about the crown, right? In, in the study of anatomy, and that goes, say with me, everything, right? We talk about the crown, and that's the part of the body, amen, that we lay at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we discuss all the crowns, hallelujah, that we can obtain as we worship Holy Spirit, right, as, as we bless God, as, as, as we're obedient, as, as beloved children of God, and, and just being beloved and knowing the glory of God and how much the Father loves us, and that agape, hallelujah, agape is overflowing. Amen. We, we trust in the Lord for he is perfect. He's the only one good. He's the only one righteous. And we know that in that transaction that what took place in the crucifixion of Lord Jesus Christ makes us crucified in him. And we are born again through the anointed Holy Spirit, risen again, hallelujah, with all the power and the glory. Remember the glory is God's view and opinion. Our Father's view and opinion that he's good perfect and loving hallelujah that he's for us amen you say all these things because you know is that as far as the anatomy as far as laying down the crown and physically laying down all the crowns hallelujah remember you just want don't you want to have just a bunch of crowns to lay at lord jesus's feet oh my goodness hallelujah and then we study botany and it talks about the daffodil with the trumpet shape in the middle here's a bigger picture and I know we're about to close. I know it's been long. Praise God. Hallelujah. I am so happy. Amen. Rejoice. I'm so happy. Glory to God. Just keep going all night long. Just keep worshiping. I know it doesn't stop here. Amen. I know that when the worship service is done. But man, God is for you. He is so in love with you. Amen. And all he wants is just for us to bless him. Just to want him. And God's going to just flood us in the overflow. Hallelujah. But look at this trumpet on the staff of it. Here's the trumpet. And then, of course, right there to your left, you see the shofar, the trumpet right there. And, of course, this word that Holy Spirit gave us was crown and trumpet. And God says, I want to expose the real virus, as I stated earlier. Holy Spirit says, I want to expose. Remember, being a child of God, you have the light of God living in you for all of eternity. Hallelujah. All because of Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember when Lord Jesus Christ walked this earth? He didn't walk in judgment. He walked in mercy, in grace, in agape overflowing. Amen. He wasn't afraid of anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The disciples weren't. I tell you right now, look at the Apostle Paul. Amen. Amen. I mean, you just, you, you just have all these examples of what Holy Spirit has done through a beloved child of God. And God says, I want you to walk this way. And I want you to show my light and expose. And one of the things that we're exposing tonight is that the real virus is, is that people are not calling upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That we are getting consumed with fear, that we're getting into worry, that we're actually acting like this world does. And we're not staying focused on that trumpet that's gonna be blown here soon. We're not staying focused on that rapture. That's the real virus. And I said, okay, Father God, thank you so much for this word. Now what's the word that you wanna give? And this is the word right here. These two definitions come from this word, Corona. And what God is asking right now in the name of Jesus Christ, for all this world to take heed. Say it with me, take heed. What does that mean? Listen. What does that mean? Worship. What does that mean? Plead the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Holy Spirit anointing will overflow. Take heed. That this Corona needs to be laid down at the feet of Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, we serve a jealous God, and he is for you and he loves you. But God does not like any idols in our life. And what is fear from the devil? What is fear from the enemy? What is worry? What is depression? What is sickness, disease? That's all idols. Rebuke that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's give God praise. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much.
for your anointing that only comes through Christ our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, I plead your blood. I plead your blood, Father God, over all of us, over your holy people, Father God, over all of us, Father. You died because you love this world, Father. That's why you gave us, Lord Jesus. And I lift up, Father God, all those right now. And Father, as we worship you, as we worship you and you bless us with these crowns to lay at the feet of Lord Jesus, and above all, our crown, Father God, when we bow down and we confess the name above every name, Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray that your word, that this message goes forth like a raging fire. That Holy Spirit, you would, you would anoint us with a fresh anointing, Father God. That all we want is you, Lord Jesus Christ. And we will stay focused on you, Father. Anticipating your return, Father God. For we know that, Father, that trumpet is going to be blown here soon. And hallelujah, Father God, I pray in the next half an hour. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that until that day comes, we will not take our eyes off of you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, praise. Bless your holy church, Father God. I thank you so much, Father, for a fresh anointing. Charge every angel over us. Heavenly Father, go before us. Destroy the plots of the enemy and push evil far, far, far away from us. And it's in Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. And all God's beloved said, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys.